Okay, in this video, I'm going to walk through the procedure that I put in place in order to access my tiny pilot publicly using my existing static IP and a little bit of port forwarding. Now, the default install, uh, you can access tiny pilot using its HTTPS colon slash slash tiny pilot, and that's it, and it searches for it on your network. But we want to find out the actual IP address that it's been assigned because when you boot the device up, it does get assigned a DHCP address. And we're going to scan for that on our local network using a program called Advanced IP Scanner. It's a free program. And we see right here, Tiny Pilot has been assigned the IP of 89.4. Okay, a couple other things we really need to know. Um, what is the IP address that we're going to be using for this device? So if we type in, and this is assuming that you have a static IP already, you type in my IP, it'll tell you what your static IP is. And in this example, we're going to want to reach Tiny Pilot by using whatever our public static is, followed by, uh, say, port 1111. We'll use that as an example. You can use any port number you want, just change it as we step through this. Now, if you're a home user and it still shows your IP address, you can use that, but when that IP changes, things will break, so this doesn't address that particular issue. So now that we have the IP address of the device, we can log into the device. So you'll notice I have a tiny pilot local right here. I've got the IP address, the port that comes by default, and we can now double click on that. And lo and behold, it logs into our tiny pilot. And this is, uh, of course, a Raspberry Pi, which is basically a Linux environment. Now, I installed a couple of packages. One of them is UFW, okay? That's the uh, firewall. I think it stands for Universal Firewall. So you're gonna do a sudo app get install UFW, and it's gonna tell me it's already installed in my case. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is enable that firewall. So we're gonna type in sudo UFW enable and it's gonna let you know it might disrupt existing SSH connections, but guess what, it doesn't. So hit yes, and you'll be at a command prompt. The next thing we gotta do is uh, add the port we want to open. So, w allow one, 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 one. Now it's important to note that by default, Tiny Pilot ships with no firewall and nothing blocked. We're installing the firewall to provide a more secure environment since we're going to be accessing this thing from the internet. We don't want everybody to be able to just stream in with whatever port they choose and do it, right? We've got to, we've got to lock this down. Uh, just to kind of show you how this firewall is now working for you, we'll type in uh, IP tables s sudo in front of it, and uh, that'll give you a list of all the things you see right off the bat, drop, drop, anything coming in. So it's, it's blocking everything and then it's going to only allow those things that are listed uh, at the bottom. And among those is this line item right here that says 1111 accept. So we've solved the tiny pilot part of the equation. It's now going to accept anything that comes in on that port and block all the other stuff. You're gonna to wanna to repeat this procedure on port 22, or you won't be able to SSH back in the next time. Very important. And if you're creative and you have other ports that you want to reach the uh, tiny pilot, this is how you do it. The next thing we've gotta do is in the etc. Et NGINX sites enable folder you will find a single file called tiny pilot conf. We're going to go ahead and edit that. And we are going to look right here where it says listen and instead of the default 443 we're going to change it to 1111. Or pick a port of your own choosing. 
We just don't want to make it too easy for the outside world to know what port it is and make it a custom port. And we'll go ahead and exit out of that. And by the way, I use a program called Vim, uh, V-I-M, so you can do a sudo app get install Vim and put that in there. It makes it easy to get around. I, I personally, and you can install other helper programs. For instance, locate when you're trying to find a file, you could uh, app get add the program called locate. Easy to find files that you're looking for. All right, at this point, go ahead and restart uh, ngnix. That'll commit those changes. And uh, by the way, on the issue of the firewall, I should have addressed this already. Anytime you make changes to the firewall, the very next time you restart your computer or uh, Tiny Pilot, it's going to blow those out of there. They're currently just in memory. So in order to save those, you need to make the following, uh, write the following statement. Okay, sudo ibtables-save, greater than symbol, and then this particular file, which will automatically be looked at uh, by Linux once it reboots. Oh, you've got to be a sudo user to begin with. Okay, then do it. We'll get it right. Third time's a charm. You've got to be a sudo user and then do it. No problem. Okay, and then the next one, we just also put a v6 on there. They're the same rules. They're going to apply to both cases. Now they're hard-coded in. And if you ever want to see what your hard-coded rules are, you can just uh, edit any one of these two files. You could edit them manually and make the changes on the spot, but it's easier to just use uf w add and then do this save command when you want to uh, save what's in memory. So that kind of wraps up what's inside Tiny Pilot. You've got the NG, or Nginx as commonly referred to, the, that web interface configured. You've got the firewall saying yes, we'll accept it and block everything else. So now let's move on to your router because it has to be configured properly. Now, every router is a little different on how, how this is done, so you'll have to look your router up. But essentially, in our case, we're going to go to the firewall, and we're going to go to port forwarding. Now, all you'll need to do, typically, is add a rule, put the original port, which uh, also called the incoming port, the IP address of the machine that it needs to go to. and the port that you want to be forwarded to that machine. Well, we want it to be the same thing. Now, in many cases, I could just leave that blank and it would, it would automatically choose the original port as the destination port. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there for good measure. We'll call it Tiny Pilot, uh, add the rule, and we're done. And we could apply that and that's the end of that. So that's how you do that. And with that done, once you type in the static IP address of your router, which in our case is the 208.120, followed by a colon and your port number, it should come up in the browser. To demonstrate that, we're going to type in our local internal address, um, which we know that machine to be. The tiny pilot was at 4, a colon, and the port number. And so the router is going to automatically allow it, and the tiny pilot device is going to also automatically allow it and use it to let you see the program. So there we go. Now I've turned on the username and password feature in my tiny pilot so that I can uh, keep the public away even a step further. Takes a little while, but we're in. And uh, the beauty of Tiny Pilot is revealed. Now, this is from the internal IP address, but uh, and if you type this in while you're inside your router's network, oftentimes this won't come up. So, if I were to just go over here and type in my external address, which is okay, this is probably going to fail. I'm not really sure what the workaround for this would be to allow that public IP to be visible inside the network. I know there is some kind of fancy networking 
configurations that can be done to test it, but I have found the best way to approach it is just to bring it up on my phone because quite frankly, I don't need the public IP when I'm inside the business. Make sure you turn off your Wi-Fi, otherwise you'll still be on your local network. And there it is. At this point, I'll just go ahead and enter in my credentials. And the benefits of Tiny Pilot and all its beauty are before us. And that's it. That's how you put port forwarding in place so that your Tiny Pilot is available at a static IP both inside and outside your store. I guess I should mention one other thing you really need to nail down is within your router, you need to make sure that this dot four or whatever IP address you choose doesn't change. Uh, in my case, I'll look at services, my LAN, view leases, find the dot four right there. I'll tell it to map a static IP. I'll call it tiny pilot. We'll give it uh, the respective capitalization and save it. So that, that makes sure that upon reboot of my router or anything like that, this IP never goes away. The port forwarding always stays in place. Thanks for watching. This was an unknown unknown for me, and I hope it makes it more of a known for the rest of the world who are going to use these tiny pilots to do their thing. Take care.